Hello everybody. Now I will discuss the another part of the materials and microstructural evolutions uh, that is the last part of these things uh, see this particular how to look into the different types of the uh, microstructural features to analyze this thing for the metallic material. So, you understand that uh, microstructure is very important to understand because it actually decides the different types of the properties. So, all electrical, magnetic properties or any other physical properties, mechanical properties all are actually influenced by the what are the microstructure has been developed. So, that is why if it is there is a correlation between the microstructure and the different properties then once you understand the correlation between these two then it is possible to cater the different types of the mechanical or other physical properties just to cater the the microstructure during the manufacturing of the material basically in the very following uh, these steps because we explained that when you try to make you the steel which is steel is the numerous application uh, in our in everyday life but when you produce the steel in this case it is always passes through the the basic casting and solidification process. So, here if we control the microstructure of the solidified component then properties can be varied or properties can be catered. Now, what microstructural features we should consider or we should look into. So, microstructural features for example, usually we look into the grain size uh, and the microstructure, what is the amount of the impurities, what are the different phase constituent, is there any porosity or not in the, the structure, is there any during the solidification, is there any production of the macro or micro segregation is there how the dislocation is distributed, where the dislocation density is very high near the grain boundary or there is a uniform dislocation density is there. So, all this matters. Now, even what is the nature of the grain boundary and uh, is there very clearly distinguished uh, observe the grain boundary is there or not or is there any inclusion or not in the structure all these microstructural features. Then we should understand the what are the different measurement techniques or the what can the instrument can be utilized to understand the to measure all these microstructural features. Now, these features can be measured definitely and it can be quantified using this different techniques. For example, grain size, pore size, they are having different techniques are applicable to measure the grain size, to measure the pore size to measure the if there is a different uh, second phase particle to measure the volume fraction of the particular phase what is the elemental distribution is there in the different structure that is open we require to analyze composition what are the composition of the metal or after solidification is there any composition changes is there or not all this kind of the features can be measured in the different techniques phase identification and analysis of the failure surface just look into what was the cause of the failure all these analysis uh, can be microstructural features can be analyzed using the different measurement techniques. So, all this microstructure evolution can be analyzed either 2D or 3D methods. There are so many methods are there. I am not going into much details about the method just an overview uh, of the different uh, me methods or processes. For example, we do the surface topography analysis, porosity you try to look into any kind of the crystal defects is there, any kind of interfaces is there or not. Uh, using all this the micro uh, we can analyze using this 2D and 3D methods. So, this principle is that this thing just from the samples we can do one uh, measuring a method is the imaging process. So, we can utilize the optical image or electron microscope. So, we use the optical either we can use the optical microscope and we can utilize the electron microscope and any kind of the surface probe techniques this in general that is called the imaging process using all this instrument. So, just to measure the different look into the microstructure and the whether there is there any any kind of the, the measure the grain size or particular phase because uh, in the resolution are, are different for example, my optical microscope and the electron microscope in these two cases resolutions are completely different. So, therefore, in certain cases the optical microscope we may not able to get the clear information on uh, the structure. So, in that cases further magnification if we need it then we should follow the electron microscope we can get the more information from the sample and we can get the other phase constituent or any kind of the dislocations is there or not that is not possible to measure using the optical microscope. So, in that cases we need to go for the electron microscope. Similarly, other techniques also then other methodology that is diffraction based. So, in diffraction based we can use the reflect the light uh, diffraction or x diffraction, electron neutron diffraction and other 
that is the including the effect or the imaging processes. So, this diffraction techniques is important and uh, before imaging if we capture the diffraction uh, phenomena and based on that we can make some conclusion where we can measure certain or uh, we can quantify the different uh, a microstructural feature in, in a particular sample and sometimes there is a need the spectroscopic based analysis in this cases we need the chemical analysis from the selected areas to gain the information associated with any kind of the microstructural features or uh, in, a, in a particular sample. Now before placing the get the information of a particular sample it is necessary to prepare the sample which is applicable or suitable for the get the information under the optical microscope or electron microscope. So, once we get this then optical microscope you want to place we want to get the image of the uh, using the optical microscope of a micro sample it is necessary to polish the sample. So, in that cases for polishing the sample so in this cases we use the mechanical polishing unit and then we get the polish the sample desired surface finish is there and then we use the chemical each and solution so the chemical each and reaction will happen in such a way that will be able to distinguish the different grains and different phases constant on the sample. So, there is a standard procedure is there we can follow the standard metallography to obtain this uh, to before placing the sample under the microscope. Now, this uh, other cases also if suppose in, in case of the, the mechanical polishing may not be sufficient if you try to follow the electron microscopy. So, in this case the surface finish or the surface preparation is much more rigorous. So, sometimes we can use the iron beam machining operations uh, to perform the very polish finish and their surface finish. So, that particular surface will be able to detect using the, the electron microscope. So, I mean to say that before applying the optical microscopic analysis or electron microscope we need to go for the proper preparation of the surface using the following the standard metallography process. Now, here example the ACM scanning electron microscope, TEM transmission electron microscope is basically low scale microstructural feature. So, very low scale microstructural feature if you want to for example, if you want to observe the dislocation in kind of the crystal defect. So, if you try to observe the dislocation, then this dislocation observation is not possible using the uh, optical microscope. In that cases, we should go for the transmission electron microscope. So, once you go for the transmission electron microscopy to understand to see the to visualize the dislocation density or dis to observe the dislocation. In that cases, it is also the papers preparation of the sample is also required. In this cases, we usually follow the ion beam machining. The very good surface preparation is also required to observe the dislocation in using the transmission electron microscope. Sometimes we can use the high resolution x-ray computed tomography and uh, CT scan also we can utilize in this case to measure the porosity in a structure in that case. And sometimes we can use the if you want to understand the measure the residual stress in a structure we can in the over the surface if you try to measure the residual stress then x-ray diffraction method can be utilized. And if we understand the what is the amount of the residual stress certain depth from the surface then we can utilize the Newton diffraction technique. So, these are the techniques is basically using to measure the residual stress. Sometimes we do the EDS analysis, the energy dispersive spectroscopy analysis to understand the chemical composition of a particular metals. Sometimes we do the XRD also in this X-ray diffraction also diffraction based analysis, but in that cases we can measure the phase identification. We can use the different phases there, then we can use the uh, intensity versus two theta graph. So, from that graph we can map with the existing one and based on that we can we can identify the what are the different phases are present there. So, that also based on the diffraction based and sometimes we want to associate it with the phase transition temperature in that cases we can follow DSC method differential scanning calorimetry. So, in this case what the principle is followed that the measurement of the temperature and the heat flow associated with the phase transition temperature for the metals. In this cases we follow a certain heating rate and cooling rate and we can observe what is the phase transformation temperature following using the differential scaling, uh, scanning calorimetry. So, this is uh, the different methodology I can say or sometimes different instrument we can utilize for the measurement of the different microstructural features and sometimes we can utilize to measurement of the any kind of the defects associated with the uh, component. So, this that is why the all these cases we need here we need to know that for what kind of the analysis uh, what type of the measurement method 
can be utilized in our case. So, th in that, that's why I am trying to give overview of this thing. Now, microstructure evolution is there also because we need to, I am just trying to give some, some view on the microstructure evolution associated with the, for example, casting process because microstructure develop once the solidification starts in, a, in case of the casting process. So, if you look into the typical structure, the ingot structure, here you can see that uh, if you see the this figure, the types of the microstructure or uh, the structure develop that the three different zones is there. So, this is for the cast component, one is the chill zone, chill zone is the liquid in contact with the cold mold. So, with the when the mold wall come under the contact of the liquid metal, then at the wall it produces the chilled uh, uh, actually chill zone. So, here rapidly cooled and almost equiac structure it will try to fall around the wall. Now, once it is done the crystal is in the chill zone grow dendritic. So, if you say they try to grow the dendritic the columnar uh, zone try to follow certain direction and uh, after that columnar zone if you see at the middle we can get the equiac kind of the uh, zone. So, here typical structure is basically chill zone, columnar zone and equiac zone. Uh, which usually occurs in the during the solidification phase of a cast component, casting of a metal. So, here collimogen is close to the direction of the heat flow if you see the perpendicular to the, the mold wall which is grow faster because along this direction the steepest temperature gradient actually exists that is why along this direction there is a the flow of the wall uh, this column this it try to grow in this particular direction. Now, each columnar crystal contents the might be having very primary dendritic arm and also there is a development of the secondary dendritic arm, but it is restricted up to the next column. So, similarly once it is done, then finally at the middle we can get the equiax grain, so randomly oriented grain at the center of the ingot structure and effective source of the suitable temperature pulses is provided for the turbulent convection current that means during the solidification process. If you see the almost at the same time the nucleation occurs such that we can expect at the center the solidification at the last stage of the uh, solidification and here you can expect the almost equally the heat is extracted from throughout this zone. So, there you can expect kind of the equiax kind of the structure. So, this uh, this we getting that this typical structure because that heat extraction heat flow are completely uh, different and that and the heat flow during the solidification actually decide this kind of the structure and that that is why it is also necessary to understand to some extent about the solidification behavior in the casting and the welding process such that we will be able to understand what kind of the different structure usually form during the solidification uh, because solid, solidification step actually decides the uh, microstructure of a cast component or of a welded component. Here also you can see that uh, well microstructure also you can observe and right hand side I have given this is the one kind of the simulation the temperature distribution how it looks and the flow of the molten material during the fusion welding process. If you see the from the center to that arrow is there from the center to outward periphery. So, try to follow liquid is try to flow from center to the outward periphery and red zone is basically indicates the uh, molten zone liquid metal zone and gradually once it is solidify then it is follow the different kind of the structure. Now, here I have given the time temperature this is very informative time temperature that uh, diagram because at the different position time temperature diagram is decide the, the metallography or microstructure uh, of a component. So, that is why from the simulation and from the analysis always we try to understand the time temperature diagram. Uh, from this time temperature diagram we will understand that what kind of the phase is there or what kind of the phase is usually formed or what kind of the cooling rate which is following one particular point. Based on that the structure as easily different microstructure is easily formed. So, that is why when you understand the oil microstructure also first we need to understand how temperature varying with respect to time at the different position. But one particular metal we have that basic the equilibrium phase diagram that is a, in case of the binary alloy system we have the time temperature transformation diagram for a particular binary alloy system we have the continuous cooling transformation diagram. So, all these diagrams uh, for a binary alloy system will help to understand what are the different phases or presence or different phases form in any kind of the welding and the casting process. So, that is why all information different structure is the, this is very standard diagrams are available and even it is uh, very common in case of the steel process this is because this structure is available and we will discuss about the uh, in associated with the, the steel also. 
equilibrium phase diagram, time temperature transformation diagram and uh, continuous cooling transformation diagram. So, all this uh, we can use this uh, diagram because in we get uh, because when you try to analyze the casting or the welding process of the steel then what kind of the microstructure it will develop in that cases we always we try to relate the phase diagram, TTT diagram and CCT diagram to get the information of the final microstructure usually form. Now, we will see for example, phase transformation usually form in the uh, under the equilibrium condition. So, iron and iron carbide phase diagram we can see there are uh, four different phases the gamma austenite, alpha ferrite, beta cementite and delta ferrite. So, this is the all four single phases we can observe and you can see the x axis the percentage of the carbon and y axis are remaining and the iron and uh, y axis is the temperature. So, we can see that different temperature phases are different. So, this particular zone we can get the austenitic phase, this particular zone we can get the mixture of alpha plus ferrite plus cementite, uh, alpha ferrite plus cementite the mixture of this thing actually cementite is basically Fe3C and here the carbon percentage is around 6.678 percentage of the carbon is there and ferrite is 0 0.028 percentage percentage of the carbon composition can dissolve. So, here alpha ferrite is here maximum carbon dissolved can be 0 0.02 percentage of the carbon. So, maintain that this particular carbon percentage is dissolved in a structure it can form the different phases. So, what phases at what temperature what kind of the phases are there that information will be getting from the analysis of the phase diagram. But remember this is the this given the information about the equilibrium phase diagram. Uh, it means that it you are not getting information we are not able to link with the time here. So, only the under equilibrium condition these are the phases actually form. So, in this cases it means that mathematically equilibrium phase diagram is usually produced uh, when getting the infinite time uh, to uh, reach from one phase to another phase, but sufficient times are there actually to reach one phase to another phase. So, that is the once you understand the phase diagram it is the example of the phase diagram you can see you can get in any standard textbook also it is available and here you can see the x axis the steel up to 2 percentage of the carbon and remaining the up to 2 to up to 6.678 percent of the carbon that is the cast iron and we can see the cast iron different phases are there and even steel also different phases are there at the different temperature but all information it is a basically under equilibrium conditions. So, this way we can utilize the iron iron carbide phase diagram to understand the at what temperature what kind of the phases is usually form. Similarly, the utilization of TT diagram we can see the TT diagram of the carbon steel we can see the time temperature TTT diagram for 0 0.6 percentage of the carbon steel. Here you can see that x axis represents the transformation time in the logarithm scale, but y axis represents the temperature of the transformation and we can see in between you can see there is a solid line is there see this is the transformation finish this solid line indicates the transformation starts and that transformation occurs at constant temperature. So, here transformation starts and transformation finish. So, here 0 percentage for example, 100 percent completed. So, we see the different we have divided the different temperature zone this zone is the perlite coarse perlite fine perlite. So, it starts with the some austenitic phase transformation line the starts of the transformation and it takes some finite time to finish the transformation ends the 100 percent. So, converting from the 0 percentage austenitic phase initially starting with the austenitic phase and directly converted to the another phase 100 percent conversation is possible. So, that is a 100 percent completed the here one phase to another phase and you see this is the parallel zone this is the bionite upper and lower bionite depending on temperature and this is the temperature low temperature it is the martensitic and bionite uh, structure is pro, uh, produced and all these cases we can see if we count the what is the transformation time the what this is the horizontal line if we plot it if we count this corresponding time that will get the information how much time is required from transformation from one phase to another phase at constant temperature. All this information is available in this time temperature transformation diagram. Similarly, CCT diagram also of the carbon steel, the CCT diagram carbon steel 4340 steel here we can see the transformation start and end temperature see this is the this is the phase austenitic to ferrite phase the transformation, but here which is superposition of the this uh, at the different cooling rate we can produce it here the time x axis time and y axis temperature and see this is the 
this indicates the constant cooling rate. So, 8.3 degree centigrade per second. So, if this cooling rate is more than that, then more than that, this side it is basically try to produce the martensitic structure. So, very high cooling rate means the diffusion time is very less. Therefore, it produces the martensitic structure. Now, if you are gradually reducing the cooling rate, it produces the between this cooling rate in this zone. So, we can see in this zone, it is a martensitic plus bionite structure. This particular zone, it is a mixture of martensitic ferrite plus bionite structure and cooling rate is very slow. It will produce the ferrite plus pyrolyte structure. So, all this kind of the structure and all depends on the what cooling rate we are following. So, basically this diagram give you the, gives you the information that at what cooling rate, what kind of the structure we can get in case of the 4340 type of the steel. So, now if you see these three different types of the diagram, the one is the equilibrium phase diagram, we will get only the information about the what kind of the phases under equilibrium condition it will produce. And this phase diagram, here the x axis depends on the composition of the carbon. So, at what composition the different phases can be produced at the what temperature, particular temperature. Now, TTT diagram and CCT diagram, we fix the composition, but we will get the information, the transformation from one phase to another phase. And in TTT diagram, this happens at constant temperature. But CCT diagram, we can restrict the different zone, the different phases, but following the, the here, we can distinguish based on the cooling rate. So, that is why in steel industry, it is very important to understand all these three diagrams to get the information of the different phases. So, this type of diagram is available for other types of the material. Now, here certain just quick review of the uh, this thing different types of the microstructure also for example, just oil microstructure in case of the low carbon steel. In case of the low carbon steel, after welding what kind of the microstructure we can expect. Here you can see the that grain boundary ferrite, polygonal ferrite, Whitsminton ferrite, acicular ferrite, upper bionite, lower bionite. These are the typical structure and in associated with the low carbon steel, welding of the low carbon steel. Of course, it is a fusion welding and we see this grain boundary ferrite, all the ferrite structure, their proton, their distribution are something different. That is why we get the different names here, the grain boundary ferrite, polygonal ferrite structure, shape are different in these cases, but all are ferrite, Whitsminton pattern, ferrite, acicular ferrite, their shape are different actually. The ferrite, this particular ferrite phase is embedded in the matrix in the different shape. So, it means that all these forms because it is depending upon the, the temperature, depending upon the uh, what temperature transformation occurs or depends on the what kind of the cooling rate we can usually observe uh, in this particular uh, material, low carbon steel. Ferrite is because in the low carbon steel that you know the carbon percentage is very low. So, in that case, chances is to produce the different kind of the ferrite structure because we see that ferrite composition of the ferrite is 0 0.02 percent of the carbon. So, chances are much more to produce the different kind of the ferrite structure in case of the low carbon steel. But what this information we can even if we analyze the same the CCT diagram also from the CCT diagram we can expect the whether it is martensitic structure, ferrite structure or binary structure all this information we can get it from the for the analysis of the CCT diagram. The help of the CCT diagram we can get the basic structure what kind of it is produced whether martensitic structure whether it is binary structure whether it is ferrite or mixture of all these uh, different phases it will produce. So, here it is the CCT, TTT diagram are helpful here. Just to visualization of the if you see the and the so we can get the optical image I think these are the optical image either optical image or scanning SEM image. So, from here we can distinguish the different type of the structure and mark it here. The if you see the skeletal ferrite structure and you can easily mark the fusion boundary also and the dimension of the fusion boundary and we can see the prior austenitic grain is there, skeletal structure is there, feathery ferrite is there, lath type delta ferrite is there. So, different type of the partially transform the delta gamma phase. So, different phase uh, is can be identified just to look into the microstructure uh, uh, and that microstructure can be obtained from the optical microscope or electron microscope. But I am not going into much details about the the link between the structure and all this thing that will discuss when the one particular process here just to show that different microstructure is formed, different phases can be formed and that can be measured using the optical or uh, transmission electron microscope. 
So, here some understanding this thing that well microstructure of the uh, SS310 high nickel content and in this case is a basically primary austenitic dendrite and inter delta ferrite is there between the primary and secondary dendritic are we can observe. But in case of the SS309, this is also another type of the stainless steel. In this case, the chromium percentage is very high, here nickel percentage is high. So, here consists of the primary lath delta ferrite in an austenitic matrix. So, we mean to say that purpose is to that, see the different get steels, but the, the element content are one cases is more or less based on that, here structure, distribution, pattern or the shape, size of the uh, this uh, different phases are actually different and this is the, so I mean to say that the little bit change in the composition, it can completely change the, the uh, different pattern and the shape, the distribution of the different phases. And that is why here we try to understand the basic uh, of the different uh, microscopy, uh, metallography uh, of the sample and uh, uh, from there we try to analyze the different sample, different structure you can observe from the, uh, from the image of the uh, optical microscope or scanning electron microscope. We can read the image, we can identify different phases, we can distinguish the different boundary also, the fusion zone, non-fusion zone, all this kind or heat affected zone uh, can be there. So, here is the utilization of the different of measurement techniques and once we measure it, then we will be able to analyze the different structure and finally, we can link this particular microstructure or different phase with the mechanical properties. So, that was the purpose to understand the, the, the microstructure evolution associated with the, uh, the uh, any kind of the material processing technology. I think that is all and now we finish the, uh, this first uh, sub component of the, this uh, introduction to this material processing part. Thank you very much for your kind attention.